Thank you so much for joining us today for this very special Monday brief. I thank God that you are and we are able to come to you from this platform and speak to you what I believe is in God's heart for you and for me. Many times as I minister the Word of God, I've come to know that God is not just speaking to you, but He is speaking to me as well. I want to really bless God for the many people who will download later as well. God bless you so much. God speak to you in a way that you can be able to understand because that is his will. Let's pray for the word of God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you for your people. I bless you that you are a good God. I bless you because of this platform by which we can be able to reach your people. We avail ourselves to the Holy Spirit so that he can speak to your people the way you want them to be spoken to. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to begin with uh, some kind of uh, life experiences that I have had. I'm just going to talk to you about two of them. Because I believe in this one thing. All of us, all of us, at one time or another, have felt the tyranny of urgency. Find yourself in a situation that is so urgent. A situation whereby you know, here it's life and death. Let me speak to you this evening concerning urgency. Now, one time when we lived in Scotland, that's back in 1987, I left the house where we were staying was staying in a church house where a very generous pastor, I mean, gave us a place to live. That was when my wife was doing her studies in Scotland. And I was helping the pastor during that time that we were there. I left the house and there was something that I needed to do, but I felt I must go very quickly, very, very quickly to the post office and send, you know, a mail back home. I went there, and like we are used to here, I cut on the queue, jumped to the queue, there were about four people, there, I went right to the counter. And when I went to the counter, the people that were in the queue never spoke anything. They just looked at me. By the time I went to the counter, the lady that was behind the counter there looked at me and said, you jumped to the queue. And so in a very embarrassing manner. I had to retreat, I had to go back and queue. And then the person that was in front of me looked at me and said, your chance will come. I'll never forget that in my life. Your chance will come. That's one instance. The other instance, I was a small boy. I'm coming from home. Those days we didn't have matatus. I'm coming from home. 
and I'm going to travel from the place we, we call it on Turiri. And I'm going to Nanyuki. That's a distance of about eight kilometers away. I'm walking on foot. And uh, you have to walk a distance, quite a distance from, I mean, from our village to the Tamak Road. When I came to the Tamak Road, I mean, uh, I wanted to stop in a car, in a vehicle that I would see so that I get a lift. I stopped one car. The man was very kind. He stopped. But when he stopped, I went straight to, you know, to open the door. And as I opened the door, I sat down, you know, next to him. And then I, I, I expected him to start moving. He didn't. He looked at me and he told me, I don't think what you are going to do is as urgent. Do this. Just get out of my car. And I want you to learn this one lesson. People always have to be, I mean, to ask for help. The fact that I stopped does not mean that you have the right to come straight into the car. You have to ask first. I'll never forget that lesson. That there are things that we have to learn on the way. Things that are very precious, very, very precious lessons that we must learn of this li in this life. And then sometimes they will come when urgency knocks at our doors. Let's go to the Bible. The book of Luke, chapter 8. The Bible says here, in verse 40, Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because... His only daughter, a girl of about 12 years, was dying. As he was on the way, the crowd almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. But no one could help her. She came up from behind and touched the head of his cloak and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, people are crowding and pressing you. But when Jesus, but Jesus said, Someone touched me, and I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at her feet in the presence of all the people. She told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Let, 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 let's first of all stop right there. This woman has jumped the queue, so to speak. What do you think Jairus felt? I mean, she, I mean, Jairus is the synagogue leader. Jairus went to the church. She, he, the Bible says he went to Jesus, so to speak. Jairus 
was a worshiper. I mean, he worshiped God. He was in the ministry. And the Bible says, his only daughter is now sick, very, very sick, dying, and Jairus comes to Jesus. And Jesus is gracious enough to say, let's go. But when they are going, somebody cuts on him. Think about that. This, has, this, this seems to happen many times in our lives. Many, many times. I want you to see that this woman came from nowhere. How many people, how many people do you know who came to church just recently? You have been saved now for the last 5, 10, 20, 30 years. It looks like they, they just came from nowhere. And God is blessing them in mighty ways. And you feel they, they look like, they, it looks like they have jumped to the queue. And this doesn't look to me fair. I mean, of course, it didn't look fair for Jairus. No, it didn't. It didn't feel good. When this, this woman comes from nowhere, I mean, nowhere. And he comes, and she comes. She even comes from behind. She's penetrating the crowd, through the crowd. Touches the cloak of Jesus' garment. She gets healed. Instantly, I'm saying instantly, Jairus is still on the road. I know you feel you are still on the road. And other people seem to jump the queue, so to speak. It looks like God is allowing them to cut on you. But I come to tell you, like, that man told me in Scotland many years ago, your chance will come. I come to tell you today, your chance will come. What does the Bible tell me? Listen to this. It's very interesting. This woman had been suffering from, you know, a, from as long as the small girl was born. Think about it. This woman was suffering all these 12 years. So when, when she comes and touches Jesus' cloak, I mean, 12 years is a long time. I know you will tell me, but the girl was at the point of dying. This is where I come to tell you something that I have learned the hard way. The hard way. Did I tell you that I learned how to be courteous? How to ask for help? How not to, I mean, take advantage of people's generosity the hard way? That's how I learned it. Now I want to tell you something I have learned the hard way. Listen to this very carefully. It's very, very important. It is urgent to you and to me because it appeals to our helplessness. But it is not urgent to Jesus. Because with him nothing is impossible. I'll say that again. It is urgent to us. Because. I mean we are helpless. We feel helpless. We feel desperate. 
We feel our abilities are gone. Our resources are gone. We feel that even our prayers are gone. They are gone. But I come to tell you, it is urgent because it appeals to our abilities. Please listen to this. It was urgent to Jairus because he had reached a place whereby there is nothing he could have done to help his girl. But to Jesus, it wasn't. Why? Because healing somebody, like he healed this woman, and raising the girl from the dead, to Jesus, it's one and the same thing. I'll say that again. It is urgent, my friend, because it is speaking volumes about your helplessness. But I want you to remember that with our God, nothing is impossible. And those things that are impossible unto us, they are possible with God. I mean, the Bible comes and says, if we go, if we go on with this story, please listen to this. This is so vital. This is so vital. So, so vital. Even Peter, Peter, Jesus comes and asks, who touched me? Peter is telling Jesus, Jesus, I mean, we have a lot of people here. Let's get going. Let's move. Let's go to God to, you know, to help Jairus go. I mean, Jairus said she is dying. Oh, yes. Let's go. But Jesus knew the time, the chance, the space for Jairus was still there. It was still there. The girl would live and all will be well. Listen to this. I'll say this again. There are people who are surrounding you. And they are also telling you it's so urgent. It's so urgent. Jesus must do something. And if he doesn't do something, I mean, forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. But I tell you, listen to this. That's what they told Jairus. The Bible comes and says, as Jesus was finishing with this woman, listen to this. While Jesus was still speaking, verse 49, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher. Don't bother him. Don't go to, to that church again. Forget about salvation. After all, it's your life. It's your life. I mean, God failed you. You have been waiting upon him for this long. You have served him for this many years. And now look at what he has allowed to come your way. It looks like, I mean, he doesn't love you. And um, do something with your life. Do something. Forget about this. Wait a minute. The Bible comes and says here, hearing this, Jesus told Jairus, don't listen to them. Don't be afraid. Just believe. She will be healed. Don't listen to people. Oh yes, it's urgent, but don't listen to people. One day unto the Lord is like a thousand years, and a thousand years to him, it's just like but one day. In simple terms, what can take a thousand years? Jesus can take only one day, in fact, minutes to accomplish. Please, please. It's urgent, yes. It's urgent. The years are going on. That business has gone under. You don't know how you'll come up again. That ministry, pastor, Looks like it's dead. 
you don't know what will what, I mean what to do next but I, Jesus told like Jesus told Jairus don't be afraid just believe in other words follow him continue going on with him don't listen to the professional mourners they want to celebrate your downfall but listen to this the Jesus says it's urgent yes Oh yes, I know it's urgent, but it will take a minute to handle it. Listen to this. It will take a minute to handle it. What you can accomplish in 20 years, God will help you to accomplish in two years or in one year. I mean, he is God. The Bible comes and says when he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, James, and the child's father and mother. Listen to this. Listen to this. Why did Jesus not allow them to go into the house? Because they did not have the goodwill. They did not have the, 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 the faith. What to them the chapter was closed. To them Jesus had failed Jairus. But I submit to you today, he hasn't. He hasn't. The professional mourners were going on. And the Bible says, meanwhile, all the people are wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She's not dead, but asleep. It's urgent. The girl looks dead, but to Jesus, it's not urgent. To Jesus, she's not dead. She's just asleep, and she needs only to be woken up. They laughed at him, knowing that he had, she was dead. Listen to this. To people, it's a dead situation, not to Jesus. He is the resurrection. He is the life. But he took her by the hand and said, Little girl, get up. Her spirit returned at, at once. She stood up. And then Jesus told them to give us something to eat. What am I talking about? In Scotland, I learned my chance will come. Back when I was a child, I learned this very, very precious lesson. When people are kind to me, I don't have a right to take advantage of them. That man who had stopped the car for me told me, learn the, this lesson to say please and also to say thank you. I come to tell you today, Jairus learned that to Jesus, the reason why it was not urgent, it was because he is the resurrection and he is the life. For him to heal the woman with the, 12, I mean, with the issue of blood for 12 years and to raise this girl of 12 years was just about the same. God bless you so much. Yes, it's urgent, but Jesus knows he will work it out. He will work it out for you. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. And of course, and then we'll continue from here. Of course, Friday we have another brief, which will be very, very special. I would want to remind you. Saturday we have the blowout and they're followed by the Kikuyu service. The blowout is at five. Kikuyu service is at around six. And then of course we have the Sunday service, services as usual. I want to request you again. Just in case you have not subscribed to our platform, please do. Please do. And I mean, if you know anybody, and I know you know some people, who are just about to give up. Who are just about to tear their lives to pieces. They're just about to blow it out. Because they are in a dire situation. 
Please, they need this message. Send it to them. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. Thank you.